phenomenon of attenuation in the E. coli trip operon is a second means of controlling the transcription of the operon after the negative control system has already had a chance to operate. If we look at the E. coli trip operon, you have here in the DNA promoter, an operator, a leader sequence, which we'll come back to, and then a series of structural genes, EDC, BNA, trip EDC, BNA, code for polypeptides that make up a series of enzymes that are required for the synthesis of tryptophan. Now, there's a standard negative control system in that elsewhere in the genome, there's a trip R gene that encodes a repressor. The repressor, unlike the LAC repressor, as, transcri as transcribed and translated in its uh, in its state without any ligand bound, it's inactive. Sometimes referred to as the APO repressor. It then binds to tryptophan to form the active repressor. The active repressor is then able to bind to the operator. When it binds there, of course, it prevents RNA polymerase from transcribing the operon. You don't get the polycystronic messenger. We refer to tryptophan in this system as the co-repressor. Now, you would think that this would be a sufficient system to regulate the transcription of the operon so that when you have high tryptophan levels, repressors active, you don't make more of the enzymes, you don't make more tryptophan. When the tryptophan gets used up in translation, tryptophan levels are low, then you have inactive apoprepressors, and that permits RNA polymerase to bind and transcribe. However, there's a second level, sort of a fail-safe, in the trip operon to prevent production of the polycystronic messenger when there's high tryptophan content in the cell. And of course, you have to keep in mind the repressor is held to the operator solely by hydrogen bonding. That's going to be in an equilibrium. So even when there's a lot of tryptophan around, once in a while the repressor comes off the operator, RNA polymerase is able to transcribe this, and so you might start transcribing the operon even when the cell has sufficient tryptophan present. The second level of control is what's known as attenuation. And in order to think about that, we need to look at this little region here, and let's think about the RNA that's transcribed from this leader region. So in that RNA, you've now got this little leader sequence. So this is transcription starts here, at the very beginning. Down here at the other end, out, out past there, you would start getting into the coding region of the first of the cistrons in the polycystronic messenger for trip E. In the leader sequence, there's a series of four palindromes, or, or a four-part palindrome in the leader in the DNA. When transcribed, this gives you four regions. Region 1, which is complementary and reversed to region 2, which is complementary to region 3, which is complementary to region 4. As you can see, there's a variety of ways this RNA could fold with secondary structure, pairing different parts of the leader sequence. On top of that, in region 1, there's a start codon and a little tiny mini gene. It codes for a 14 amino acid polypeptide. There's a stop codon, codon down here toward the end. And of the 14 amino acids in there, there are two tryptophan codons. So, when RNA polymerase starts transcribing this, it's transcribing this region here, and the first thing it does is transcribe this little mini gene in region 1. Now, this being a prokaryote, that means that once RNA polymerase has gotten through a portion of that leader sequence, the beginning of it, region 1, is then hanging outside RNA polymerase and is available then for a ribosome to bind to it. Let's take a look at what happens if Transcription has started even though it shouldn't have started, that is, that there's high tryptophan concentration in the cell.